Well, hi everyone. I thought it was time to do another update on the Big Mac Bridge in Cincinnati, otherwise known as the Daniel Carter Beer Bridge. It's I-471 over the Ohio River. And the contractor working for the DOT there has made a lot of progress. And this past Sunday, they got the delivery of their seven replacement girders and started installing them and completed that installation this week. So they got their girders delivered from Stup Bridge on January 19th, Sunday, and then they started installing them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they completed the installation of those seven girders this week. So in this video, I'm gonna go over what the next steps are and the likely timeline for getting this bridge repair completed and the bridge reopened to traffic. Also, I came across Ohio DOT YouTube channel and uh, they had a very well produced video about this project. So there's a link to that in the description. And I used some of the footage from that video here to show you the progress of the repair work. For this update, I reached out to Ohio DOT spokespeople, in particular, Matt Brunig and Kathleen Fuller, as I've done in the past, and they absolutely do not get back with me. So I have to compile my information from publicly available sources as well as the application of my own experience and judgment in these situations to tell you what I think the likely progression would be for this work, which I've done throughout this situation with the bridge, going back to the fire on November 1st, 2024, that did all this damage. Also, I've been interviewed by WCPO news folks a number of times. I just did an interview this past Monday, the 20th, with Tanya O'Rourke, so there's a portion of that interview that's used in a news story on the bridge update, and there's a link to that video in the description as well. So going back to that video from the Ohio DOT YouTube channel, this shows a different camera angle than what I saw before uh, for the fire. Just unbelievably intense. I'd show that for a moment. And let's look at the footage of them installing these replacement girders this past week. You've got the iron workers there. They're lowering the girders into position, and then they have to drill holes and install the bolts. I believe some of the holes were drilled at the fab shop and the final holes were drilled on site. Looks like they're hammering in some pins there, tightening the bolts. So that work has been done from what I understand. So the next step would be to erect form work to place reinforcing steel and concrete for the replacement bridge deck so I'm gonna go through those steps and what the challenges are. So this work's being done by Great Lakes Construction Company. The steel for the plate girders was produced by Nucor and the fabrication for the girders was done by Stup Bridge. So what's the next step? Well, you've got to install the formwork. You have to have a way to hold the fresh concrete as it's being placed as well as support the reinforcing steel so that when it cures, you remove the formwork and you have a completed reinforced concrete bridge deck in its place. So these are some pictures of typical form work. They apply compounds to make it easier to get these forms off once the concrete has sufficiently cured to gain enough strength to support its own weight. You can see an iron worker here tying the reinforcing steel together for a deck. Looks something like this or will look something like this. This just shows you them using pump trucks to place the concrete in the form supporting the reinforcing steel. So you'll end up with reinforced concrete when you're done. Now, what are the big challenges going forward? So in the interview I had with WCPO, I mentioned that, well, now they got the girders to the job site in about six weeks time, which is, is very quick, although it's within the range of what you could hope for in a best case scenario. I said, Originally, I expected them to be able to get these girders fabricated in six to eight weeks if everything went well. And it looks like that's what has happened, but the timeline's such that it appears with the November 1st fire that these replacement girders uh, weren't ordered until the end of November. So that's virtually an entire month. And uh, again, because Ohio DOT hasn't been answering my questions, I don't know why it took them nearly a full month to place that order, which is very, much the critical path for getting this bridge reconstructed. Well, what's the next challenge? You can't place concrete for reinforced concrete structure if it's too cold. Most bridge specifications reference the American Concrete Institute, ACI 306R, which covers cold weather concreting procedures. 
And let's just read this introduction. The conditions of cold weather concreting exist when the air temperature has fallen to or is expected to fall below 40 degrees Fahrenheit, 4 degrees Celsius during the protection period. So the protection period is the period you want to maintain typically temperatures of around 50 degrees or higher while the concrete is being placed and cured. And that's for a period typically of two to three days. And the idea there is if, if you have freezing in fresh concrete, you're gonna have problems. It's, it's gonna destroy the concrete and weaken it significantly. So looking at the forecast here, we can see for the next 15 days, the temperature doesn't get above 40 and we get into minus temperatures Fahrenheit as well. Ohio DOT has given themselves an estimated mid-March completion date for reopening this bridge to traffic after the repairs are completed. And I think they gave themselves that much time to allow for weather delays. Because based on my experience on other bridge projects, I would think that now that the girders are in place, they can start erecting the formwork to hold the reinforcing steel and then in turn the fresh concrete for a sufficient time until it's cured that the forms can be removed. So if you look at the timeline for installing the formwork and reinforcing steel, at best I'm thinking about a week, then you have to place the concrete and allow it to cure sufficiently before the forms can be removed. So in rough numbers, you're looking at two weeks uh, minimum and then you gotta remove the old formwork. So two to three weeks and you should have a bridge deck replacement at the end of that time period. Now, looking at those temperatures, the only way they're gonna be able to place the concrete is if they build an enclosure. And this isn't typically done for bridges, it can be. I've seen smaller enclosures that were built to protect uh, welding operations, that has sufficient uh, temperatures for welding. They certainly build these enclosures typically with tarps in commercial high-rise buildings to allow construction throughout the winter. So I think as time is of the essence for getting this bridge reopened to traffic, uh, they should be planning to build an enclosure and they could heat the inside of the enclosure with uh, propane heaters to have the temperatures high enough to allow concrete placement. And I haven't heard any mention of a plan to install these enclosures by Ohio DOT so far. So this is sort of my, my timeline. If you had warm enough temperatures, you could have the bridge deck replaced within a three week period. So that would put you into early February and allow you know another week or two for potential slippage uh, for various uh, potential complications. I would think that if they build this enclosure, they could get this bridge uh, repair completed and reopened to traffic sometime in February. But again, it's really contingent on them building an enclosure so that they're not delayed in placing the concrete. So another question that I asked the Ohio DOT representatives, which again, they haven't responded to, was a project milestone schedule. So you could see exactly the timeline for the key activities for the bridge reconstruction. And it would be really handy to see what they're planning for that. I guarantee you they have this document. Uh, between them and the contractor. So if local media can get their hands on it, or if I get my hands on it, I'll do an update video. But that will really tell the tale of when this bridge is likely to be completed. And it won't be any time too soon for local businesses, and in particular, those of you who drive to and from Kentucky into Cincinnati every day. It's been a huge impact from what I understand. So with that, I'd like to send a shout out to the channel members. I really appreciate your support, as well as those of you who have provided super thanks. That's another great way to support the channel. I've also opened up Buy Me A Coffee. Contributions there have really helped too with the costs of doing my own investigative work, public records requests, commissioning drone flights and the like. So thank you very much to those of you who've contributed there. If you're interested in that or could support that, I've got a link in the description. So thanks very much everyone and please stay tuned for future videos.